Here's a how to fish for trout or salmon with a bobber and sponsex or skein. So here's all the gear you need. You need your rod and reel. You can do a lot of different things. You can use bait casters. You can use fly rods. I like a spinning reel and rod for uh, fishing for trout and salmon. You need your line. I suggest using braid and then a fluorocarbon leader for the bigger fish like the Chinook or the King Salmon. You probably need like 15 pound fluorocarbon for the uh, fish like steelhead you should probably have eight pound or something like that next up is you should have a bobber stopper a slip bobber setup is what i should say the reason why is you want your bait to get close to the bottom but not on it and you might need to constantly adjust it so when you have these slip bobbers you actually put it on your line first and then you can move the string up and down according to the depth of the water you're fishing in if you don't want to use that, you can buy a bobber like this where there's a top that you can take off and then you just put that uh, little peg in to peg your line, your bobber, where you want it to be as far as the depth. Now for the hooks, there's two different hook setups. One is just a regular hook. I suggest using a gamakatsu hook. They're sharp. Spawn sacks, you usually use this hook setup. Skeen, you usually use this hook setup. We have a snelled knot on the shank of our hook if you can see that the knots right there yeah and you have a loop that opens up and it's you known wrap it around the loop yeah it's it's known by us as the egg loop snell but it's pretty much just your basic snell knot okay. and you're just passing the line back through the eyelet so you can hold that on there better if you just put it on the hook you might get three or four casts out of it before it all falls, falls off. off so this holds it on better you can get more casts for people that want to buy spawn sacks or skein, the best places are the local fishing stores. If you can't find any local fishing stores, sometimes local fishermen will sell that. If you're going to be a setting fish go, you should have a net. This one's a rubber net because it's a little nicer for the fish. Um, you should have a pliers to get the hook out of its mouth. Easy. King salmon are toothy creatures, so you gotta be careful with them. The pliers is nice. If you wanna measure your fish, bring a measuring tape. Here's the setup in line so you can see in order. First thing you put on is the bobber stopper. You take that black plastic off after you have everything set up. Then you slide on a bead. Then you slide on your bobber. And your braid runs down to a swivel. You'll tie your line to the swivel. And then from your swivel, you should have uh, about three to four feet of fluorocarbon line to your hook. Now, where can you fish? The biggest thing is make sure you're fishing legally. Fish where water meets a park. At the mouths of rivers, a lot of times those are park areas, but double check on Google Maps where green and blue meets, that's usually where a park meets a river. Now, trout and salmon run at different times of the year but you want to go when the fish are getting ready to run up the river for their spawning season. We'll use king salmon or chinook salmon as an example. Early in the fall, they'll be near the mouth of the rivers and you can cast your skein or your spawn sex near the mouth of the river in hopes that you catch some staging king salmon. And then after that, the fish will run up the river. The best place to find them is in the deeper holes. You want to be near where there's pockets of deeper water because that's where the fish will concentrate. Another place, if it's not too crowded, is look for pinch points or waterfalls where they have to struggle to get up. They'll get stuck at a point like that and you can fish those areas. The next thing when you cast out, try and get your bobber to be perpendicular with the water quick. A longer pole helps this, but when your bobber is straight up and down, it's easier to see when you get a bite. You let your bobber float in rivers and in the harbors, just let it float by because that's when fish will bite. Then when you see your bobber go down, set the hook right away. Let's say you just get a nibble or something like that. You can jiggle your bobber a little bit, just get those spawn sacks or the skein moving a little bit, and sometimes that'll attract the second bite. You got a bump, right? You yeah, said that. It, it, it dropped it down, danced it a little bit, shot that. Yeah, you called it. And finally, let's say you catch a fish. 
That's awesome. Know your local regulations if you have to let it go or if you can keep it. If you are keeping it, then as you handle it, it doesn't really matter except trying to keep it cold so it doesn't spoil. If you are letting it go, keep it in the water as much as you can. Fish will survive a lot better if they're not in uh, the open air for very long. You can keep it in the net when you take the hook out of its mouth. Then get your photo op as quick as you can and then let that fish go. A good way to let a fish go or see if it's okay is to just hold it by the tail in the water and then when the tail starts to move just let it go and then it'll swim away. All right, so those are my tips for catching those trout or salmon with spawn sex or a skein. Now get out there and catch some fish!